Hello there, fellow humans, and welcome to another shop review. Now, what is worth buying, and what the hell is that? That is what we're going to find out in today's shop review. So, strap in, like, and subscribe, and let's have a look at what's worth buying so you don't waste your money. In terms of resources, these bundles here, there aren't any good because buying crits is a bad idea. But these large resupplies, for example, are a good way to get gold and get premium time if you are looking to, for example, get some premium tanks and grind some credits with them. This is a great way to obtain that. If you do decide to buy such a bundle, what you can then get is, for example, the Heavy Offensive, which is a good bundle. 10,000 gold, not 15,000, like it's usual for bundles like this, so... 10k is a very good price for this kind of bundle because the T77 is one of the best tier rates in terms of heavy tank. It is an auto loader, so it's slightly harder to play than single shot guns, but it is a good tank nonetheless. And if you bought this vehicle for 20k when it first came out, ha ha! The second vehicle in here is the KV5, which might be the least power crypt vehicle of all the old premium tanks because it still remains quite quite a good vehicle especially if you know what you're doing 2200 dpm 320 alpha damage seven degrees of under pressure this vehicle is surprisingly fast and it is also incredibly heavy now the radio operator and the machine gunner right here can still be tortured but not as effectively anymore as it used to be the case but this is still the primary weak spot of the vehicle it weighs 100 tons it goes very quickly so ramming anything is quite easy as well and the armor is very good so this is an easy vehicle to play and it also does make you decent credits because it has 219 millimeters of standard penetration. But overall, this is a good vehicle. For 5k gold, which is it is in this bundle, together with the T77, 10k, that is a very good deal. Especially also when you get these crew XP boosters on top as well. You also get a camouflage and an avatar, but those aren't worth anything. But the times 5s are unfortunately locked to the vehicle. If they weren't locked to the vehicle, this would be an absolutely outstandingly amazing bundle. Now... It's just quite good. Unfortunately, locked times fives continue to exist and it will continue to call them out because they are a terrible thing to have. And then, obviously, the equipment as well. So 10k for these two is a good price. I can recommend it. Moving on with the row of pointlessness. Let's start at the back here. Iron Man is 4,000 gold for three tier fives. I mean, if you enjoy playing tier fives, yes. But if you don't, they're just a waste of money, essentially. And the yeah, they're fine, but they're not worth buying in any way, shape, or form. Just like these aren't really worth it, because these are old collector vehicles that used to be in the tech tray, and something like a UC 2-pounder is a meme at best. You're better off buying gold directly. And then we have the GSO and the Sphere. 20 unlocked times 5, which kind of punches up the value a little bit, the GSO. A lot of people think it's a really great tank when it's fine. Like, it's an average tier 8 in terms of premium tank, and the Sphere is, well, it was actually given away for free, I believe. And it's also a Leo with a camouflage, so there's not really any value in this particularly. The only value really here is the Times 5s. The KB5 and the T77 model, in this case, is the better purchase. And then we have one optional and one not so optional and terrible. Now, the Steadfast Resilience, I already talked about this in detail last week. The AMX-30 isn't really the primary T9 medium tank that I would ever consider purchasing because obviously T9 isn't the best tier for making credits or doing damage and also nice gun here but very 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 round this is not really worth it unless you collect vehicles let's go to T56 it's fine I mean it's obviously out power crept things like an I6 or something so it is much better than vehicles like that but there are other options like a type 57 that are also worth considering and this vehicle's just in there and it, it could be unique if it had a two-shot auto loader like it does in Royal Tanks PC but now it is just a quite boring single shot gun that doesn't really have much to offer in terms of enjoyment not really the best of bundlers if it was 10k as well I would be speaking about it a bit differently but now choose wisely if you're a tank collector it can be worth it there are solid vehicles but they aren't the main vehicles to grind your credits with and then we get to what essentially now amounts to an insult given that we have the t77 and kv5 up here for the same price because instead of two good tier eight heavy tanks we have a mediocre tier eight tank destroyer and a tier seven 
Meme tank. N not, not really good. I mean, the Tankenstein is a funny little novelty for 3.5k. and It has two different guns. So other than that, the TS5 is entirely pointless. Don't forget to open your free containers because they include useful things such as combat boosters. So that's sort of thing that you always should do. And I always only do it during the shop reviews anyway. And never ever buy any of these containers, especially not the massive container, which seems to be around forever now. There is also the Charlemagne draw, a vehicle that's uh, present in the game, essentially. Not really anything special, not a great tank. He does have Hesh, so it's, it's unique at least, but... It, Unique doesn't mean good. Unique just means it exists and it's an option to purchase if it were in the shop for real money. And in this case, it is not because this is gambling and we do not support gambling around here. Now, for the first time ever in World of Tanks Blitz, you can truly find out how it feels to be British because you can purchase spice in massive quantities. 25k spice right here for 24 euros. Is it worth it? No, but you can finally feel how it is to be British to take all the spice. Now, the way to obtain the ground tank is in the Dune Part 2 event for the film. You do missions, you get the spice, and then you get the ground tank and Dave Batista's face, if that's what you're into. If you do the regular combat missions, you get the spice, and you can also get spice boosters to get the rewards, and it's basically just built up like a battle pass with 60 levels to get your rewards and the ground tank is at level 29 so not really that far away but you still kind of can't get it for free and you, you can get pointless avatars that are worth precisely nothing and also again avatars that are worth precisely nothing and unfortunately you can't even get that so what's the point it's, it's worth nothing and then you also like I said, you get Dave Batista's face and a camouflage and an avatar that's also worth nothing. And then you also get a Dune container that also includes camouflages and avatars. So essentially, the only prize that's actually somewhat desirable for anyone that doesn't care about Dune is the ground tank itself. Let's have a look at that vehicle. Now this vehicle does have a very weird perk and that is it is 30% more mobile on desert maps. Doesn't make any sense, but this is the World of Tanks Blitz that we live in now. Now this vehicle can't be obtained for free obviously because it is at level 29 of the dune event and the, the maximum you could ever hope to achieve to get for free is level 28 so you will have to spend money to obtain this vehicle and unless you're a dune fan or you like pointless super heavies like this one the kv5 is enough for you and you can just get the kv5 or you could alternatively do your best, get to level 25 for free, and then sort of get to the rest, I guess, because the price difference isn't really that big. Now, this vehicle, as you just saw right there, and as you will see again, can be penetrated through the turret somewhat easily by a lot of tier 8 heavy tanks with their premium ammunition. So, yeah, I mean, the main advantage of this vehicle is it doesn't really have a hull. It's absolutely tiny at the bottom, so hitting that is going to be very difficult. But the turret is even more massive and it can be penned by a substantial amount of tier 8 premium rounds, and obviously tier 9s are not going to struggle as well. However, tier 7s will massively struggle against this vehicle, just like they would struggle against, for example, a VK100 or a KV5. But obviously, it also has 440 alpha damage, which is somewhat of an advantage. And I guess the VK100 is the most apt comparison here. Same sort of armor and... Obviously, the ground tank is much faster, so that's one of the big advantages of this vehicle. It's incredibly heavy, but it is a bit faster than your traditional super heavy, while somewhat having your super heavy style armor and also super heavy style gun with high alpha damage of 440. Now, is this vehicle anything outerworldly OP or, or great or, or even good? Well, well not really. It, it's not bad. Certainly, it is not bad. But it isn't really anything outstanding either because the traverse speed on this vehicle is a subterranean at best and if you want to know all the detailed statistics and all that i will link a article in the description where you can read all of the specifics of the vehicle if you really care about picking this vehicle up but other than that yeah you don't really need to know any specifics because here's the thing if you have money to throw away if you're a dune fan buy the damn thing whatever it's good enough to suit for that you're gonna get some fun out of it and there was nothing wrong with it. 
But if you're not a Dune fan, if you just play World of Tanks Blitz and you generally don't care about themed vehicles like this, there are the option of, for example, picking up the T-77 and the KV-5 that are in the shop right now for 10,000 gold with boosters and all other things that are very good bundle that can be worth purchasing over something like this, which you're probably going to play five times and then never touch again unless you're a really big Dune fan. Now, the event, though, the event's pretty solid, so if you play Blitz a lot anyway and you want to get the free stuff that is in the event, I highly recommend doing that. And at the end... Once you reach level 20, 25, you might think about purchasing the extra spice to get to the vehicle. But in general, it is not something that you have to have. It's not something that is necessary in your garage. So overall, play the event as far as you want to. And then at the end, maybe one day before the event ends, decides, hmm, is this vehicle worth, I don't know, 6,000 gold to me? It wouldn't be worth that to me. 3, 4K. If you can get it for 3, 4K, hmm, sure, at that point. But outside of that, I would refrain from picking up this vehicle because eventually they're probably going to sell it again at some point. So with that said, thank you very much for watching. It's a, it's a tank. And it exists. But that, that's about it. It's solid. It's not bad. It's not great. It's in there. If you have the opportunity to pick it up, and if you want to pick it up, just pick it up. Otherwise, if you don't, then just don't bother with it.